Welcome, welcome to this lecture in the course Introduction to Paninian Grammar. In this lecture, we will be studying in general the markers in the meta language of Paninian Grammar and specifically their functions. We have been studying for some time the fundamental feature of Paninian grammar namely the meta language and notably the difference of the features of this meta language with the features of the object language Sanskrit. To take a recap, here are those sutras 1.3.2 to 1.3.8 which define the term it in the Paninian grammar. We have noted that the first sutra 1.3.2 assigns the term it to vowels whereas the rest they assign the term it to consonants. The first two sutras assign 133 and 134 assign the term it to the final consonants and the rest four assign to the consonants that come at the beginning of elements in the original initial enunciation called Upadesha. We listed down several functions of the markers. There are many more which we would not cover in this lecture. Perhaps later on we can discuss some more in detail. Right now, we noted these functions prescription of addition of suffixes, specification of the position of an element added, specification of the position of a substitute, modification in the element to which a suffix is added, negation of certain modifications of an element. It is these that we have studied so far. Now remain the two most important functions accent and meaning change and we shall study these in today's lecture. So let us look at the this function called markers and accent, the it sounds and accent. Let us take some general information about accent. Accent is an important feature of Paninian grammar, very important. Unlike other traditions of Sanskrit grammar, Paninian grammar treats this feature very very seriously and that is why it needs to be studied deeply and seriously. Noting down accents on the basic building blocks namely the root that is Prakriti and the suffix that is Pratyaya, Panini develops his grammar. Subsequently, the accent is also noted on the constructed blocks, the blocks that are constructed out of the Prakriti and Pratyayas namely the Padas, even Paninian grammar notes accents on Padas and finally the constructs namely Vakya which are constructed out of Padas, accents are noted on the Vakya as well. The Sanskrit word for accent is swara and this is a feature of a vowel. There are three key terms that we need to note in this regard. Some of them we have already studied when we looked at how anudatta it sound triggers the operation to add atmanepada suffixes after a verbal root and so on. Let us revisit those terms. They are udatta, anudatta, and svarita. Udatta is defined in the Ashtadhyayi as uchair udatta. 
1229, high pitch. Anudatta is Nichair Anudatta, 1230, which is low pitch. And Swarita is defined as Samahara Swarita by 1231. It is a combination of high and low pitch. This is how these three terms are defined in the Ashtadhyayi and are understood by even modern scholars. The accent is noted on the root and also the suffix, the prakriti and the pratyaya. That is the very basic building block. All the nominal roots which are underived generally have the final vowel udat. And when we say, when we talk of accent, we mean udatta primarily. Fishonta udattaha, that is the sutra, that is the first fit sutra which says that generally the final vowel of a nominal root is udatta. Some nominal roots which are derived in the format of root and suffix also have the final vowel udat by various sutras. Some nominal roots have the initial vowel udat and some nominal roots have the penultimate vowel udat. Generally, all the compound nominal roots have the final vowel udat. Generally, all the bahuvrihi compound roots have the first component retain its udat. Then all the underived verbal roots have the final vowel udat. All the derived verbal roots also have the final vowel udat in general. Generally, every suffix has the initial vowel udat. So, in describing all these basics, we have been using the word generally, which thereby implies that there are some rules which are exception to this general rule, which state the accent in a different position, in a different manner. But wherever such general rules, wherever such specific rules do not apply, the default or the general rules apply and they cover most of the language spoken. Thus, the ver verbal elements, they are all accented in general once again. That means they all have at least one vowel udat. So, if we look at the compositionality of building blocks, this is how we can go in this sequence in this order. So, we have first the prakriti and pratyaya which when joined together bring about a pada. Similarly, the prakriti swara, the accent recorded on the prakriti and the pratyaya swara, the accent recorded on the pratyaya that brings about the accent of the pada. Just as pada is derived out of prakriti and pratyaya, the pada swara is also derived out of prakriti swara and pratyaya swara coming together. Similarly then, once we have the pada swara ready with us of say pada 1, then we join just as we join pada 1 and pada 2 and pada 3 and as a combination we get a vakya or a sentence. Similarly, we will join this pada swara, pada swara 1 and pada swara 2 and pada swara 3 and then we will get what is known as vakyasvara or the accent on the sentence. This is how accent works in Paninian grammar. We shall study this more in detail later on. Right now, these are some basic points. In a rule based system, the accent noted at the first stage can travel through and retain itself till the last stage namely the sentence. That is one situation or this accent noted at the first stage of 
prakriti or pratyaya loses out to the other accent built in into the next level of construct in the form of a pada or a vakya. The accent noted at the first stage is in many cases the accent brought about by the it sounds or the markers and therefore such a such an accent which is brought about by the it sounds or markers can possibly stay till the last stage that is the sentence. This is how the markers play a crucially important role as far as accent is concerned, the derivation of accent is concerned in the sentence. Let us now study this aspect in more detail. So, it sounds for swara. Some it sounds are used in the Paninian grammar to trigger accent related operations at the very basic level of prakriti and pratyaya. They are y in the ch class, n, l and ch. Second group is t and r and the third group is p and we shall study the functions of these groups in the form of examples. Now, y, n, l and ch are attached to a pratyaya and bring about the accent of the prakriti derived from the prakriti and pratyaya shown also in the form of, a, of an equation below over here. A prakriti A to which a pratyaya is added can give rise in the Paninian grammar to another prakriti and then to this prakriti we add another pratyaya and that gives us a pada. So, we are saying that this y, n, etc. Y, n, l and ch are the accents of this prakriti. They are actually stated, they are actually attached to this pratyaya and then they retain the accent in this format prakriti. And then further processing happens and you get the accent, accent of the pada later on. Similarly, it sounds t and r are also attached to a pratyaya and they also bring about the accent of that pratyaya itself. So, for example, prakriti and pratyaya when they are joined together they bring about another prakriti in Paninian grammar and we have seen some examples which illustrate this equation to which this pratyaya is added and then you get the pada. Similarly, it sound p is attached to a pratyaya and it also brings about the accent of that pratyaya. For example, prakriti and pratyaya. Now, this situation arises many times in such scenario that you have prakriti and pratyaya and then you get the pada output. Let us now look at individual examples. The first one is a set of sounds y, n, l and ch. The it sound y and n which are attached to a pratyaya bring about the accent on the initial vowel of the prakriti in the format mentioned in this equation. Prakriti a plus pratyaya brings about a prakriti. So, for example, if you have a prakriti in the format of a, b, c, d, e and a pratyaya in the format of p and q. So, because Panini has noted the accents on each and every element at least one udatta. So, applying the general rule e which is at the end of this prakriti will be accented and similarly going by the rule related to the, to the pratyayas whose initial vowel is generally accented that is p, p will be accented. 
Now when these two are joined together and you get the Prakriti ABCDPQ, what will happen to these two accents? That is the question. Will E be the accent of ABCDPQ or will P be the accent of ABCDPQ? And the rule with Y and N markers says that in case of a suffix like this to which Y and N are added as markers, in their case it is this Prakriti form and that too the initial vowel in the Prakriti, in this case this first vowel will retain its accent. That means if you get the output in the form of ABCDPQ and assume that they are vowels, then it is this initial vowel will get accented in this entire word. A will get the udat. Let us take the example. Garg is the prakriti in which this final a is accented shown in blue. And when an udatta gets accented, it is generally unmarked. And when one is udatta, the rest is anudatta. Therefore, this ga becomes anudatta and is generally marked with the horizontal line, horizontal bar beneath it. And then this is how it is marked. Then in general, this is how it is marked. Then we have the suffix yai added to it, yai that is added. So now in this following the general rules of suffixes, this ya will get udatta. Now we have two elements having two udatta accents, garga and ya. Joining both these together, we get another prakriti called gargya. Now in this, which accent will be retained? The accent of ya or the accent of this final a. But because this is marked with y over here, marked in red, the rule 61197 in nityam will say that this initial vowel gets accented, that is its initial vowel gets the udatta. So this a which is anudatta initially will now in the final output turn out to be udatta. Of course, there will be some replacement of this a by a, but that a will be now termed udatta. And once this is udatta, the rest becomes anudatta, but the anudatta that follows an udatta will be termed as svarita. So, svarita is shown with a vertical bar on top of the letter. That is why this vertical bar indicates that this a is svarita. This is how the marker Y, the fifth consonant, the nasal consonant of CH class brings about the accent of the Prakriti to which it is added to. Similarly, we have another example where N is a marker and it is attached to a suffix and it brings about a similar accent. Let us look at the concrete example which is derived from the verbal root nrita. Applying the general rule, this ru is marked as accented, that is udatta. Therefore, there is no symbol given to it. So, nrita, and now we have the suffix vun to vun added to it. In this vun, vu becomes udatta by general rule, where initial vowel of the pratyaya is accented. But we note that there is this na marker coming here. Now, this wu will be substituted by aka, and then we will have nrita plus aka. Now, in this aka, once again, the initial vowel gets accented, so a will be accented. Now, we join both these two together and get the word nartaka. The question is which of these vowels will be accented in the word nartaka? And the question is answered by Panini using this marker N. So any element like this Nartaka, which is made up of a Pratyaya, which has N 
attached to it will govern the accent that falls on the initial element of that word. So, nartaka has n accented that is udatta and so every other element will be anudatta and the anudatta that follows this udatta will be termed as swarita. So, in nartaka this a is swarita. This is brought about by 61197 inityadir nityam. Let us look at the examples of l and ch now. So, in this example, gama is the verbal root to which is added lit. In gama, g is accented, and in lit, where lu is substituted by ana, here the initial vowel a is accented by the general rule, and so this remains unmarked and this also remains unmarked. Now, when we join both these together, the question is which one will retain the udatta in this derived unit of gamana? And the question is answered by 61193, which says that if an element has a marker l attached to it, then the previous element to this will get accented. So, now, this g will retain its udatta accent, everything else becomes anudatta, and the anudatta that follows anudatta will become swarita. And so, we will have this vertical bar placed on top of m, and this is how the word gamana will be accented. The sutra is 61193 liti. Then we look at the other example in which the marker ch triggers the sutra 61163 namely chitaha and then we derive the accent. So, for example, we have bhanj plus ghurach and now bhanj is followed by this suffix ghurach and in ghurach gh is termed it by 138 and ch is termed it by 133 both of them get deleted. So, you get the suffix ura and in ura u is accented by the general rule about the pratyayas. So, ra becomes anudatta and the anudatta swara that comes after the udatta becomes swarita. So, there is this mark of vertical line on top of ra which indicates that it is a swarita. Now, when this bhanja which has bha as udatta as shown here and ura which has u as udatta, when they are joined together, another rule comes in which substitutes this j by g and therefore this y gets substituted by ng and so finally you get the word bhangura. Now, which element would retain the accent and this chitaha 61163 says that the final element retains the accent. So, we will have this a coming at the end of the word marked as udatta. Therefore, everything else will become anudatta and so now we have all these vowels marked with a horizontal line beneath them indicating that they are anudatta. This happened because of 61163 chitaha. Now, let us look at the examples where the it sounds t and r play an important role to bring about the accent. So, it sound t attached to a suffix marks the swarita accent on the, on the final vowel of the suffix. So, we have chi and the accent is e over here. So, chi plus tavyat and so now this t is marked as it. Now, this will bring about the a over here as udatta. So, now we have chi plus tavya, this is udatta, this is udatta. When joined together by the general rule that the accent of the element which is stated later on that retains itself as far as the final output is concerned. So, following this general rule, we will retain the accent of vir 
and therefore everything else becomes anudat which is shown by the horizontal bar over here. Similarly, the sound r. So, it sound r attached to a suffix marks accent on the penultimate vowel of that suffix. So, we begin with the verbal root pat to which we add the suffix ani yar in which r is marked as it by 133 and it is deleted by 139. So, we have the next stage namely pat plus ani yar. Now, this aniya would have generally been marked accented in the initial position by the general rule about the suffixes and their accents. But now, because there is a r marker available, this indicates that the penultimate vowel that is e that will be accented. So, now we will get once again by applying the general rule, the accent of the word pathaniya is this e which is the accent of this pratyaya. So, therefore, these two vowels a and a which come before this udatta, they are marked as anudatta with a horizontal bar beneath them and this ya which is also anudatta, but it comes after an udatta. Therefore, it is it becomes swarita and is marked with the vertical bar on top. This is how it will get accented. Let us now look at the swara that is caused by marker it namely p. So, the it sound p marks all the vowels of a suffix as anudat, also known as nighat, this entire phenomenon. So, we start with the derivation process with patha as the verbal root to which we add the suffix tip first having p as the marker indicating that this t becomes anudat and then we add the suffix shap in between also having the marker p by 133 3 and 139. So, now if you have to note the accents here we are pat in which this a is accented and then this a which is anudat and this t also marked as anudat because of this p marker. So, finally, then we have only one udatta over here and so we retain this udatta and both these anudattas they come after an udatta therefore, this immediate anudatta a is marked as svarita and therefore, a vertical bar is placed on top of this a. So, the final accent of pathati independent separate word pathati will be this initial accent. Let us now look at this important feature of meaning change. So far, we have studied some basics about how the it sounds, namely the markers, bring about the accent as far as the prakriti is concerned, as far as the derived prakriti is concerned, as far as the pada is concerned, and then of course the vakya is concerned. Now, let us look at the role of accent played in bringing about the meaning change of the word and also some other grammatical functions. So, for example, use of marker n and ch is made in the Paninian grammar which will trigger certain accents which will distinguish the meanings of the forms derived by adding the suffix tru and tru is common to both trun as well as trach only markers are different ch and n. So, what will these markers do? As said before, they will bring about the forms in which the accent is different and this difference of accent will show the difference in meanings. Trich is stated after a verbal root by 31133 nival trichau in the sense of kartru. Trun is stated after a verbal root 3 to 135 also in the sense of kartru, but with an additional meaning, additional meaning shades namely one who is skilled etc. stated by 3 to 134 that is the difference. Let us look at the examples. Here we have the verbal root chi to which is added the suffix trach. 
Truch generally has this ru as accent that is udat. Cha is a marker by 133 and then it is deleted by 139. So now we have chi plus tru that is the stage. Then the next stage will be che plus tru. Finally, we will get che tru. Now the accent of this tru will be retained. So this ru will become udatta. Now this is also caused because of the marker ch and chitaha the rule that we saw earlier. So this final vowel gets accented, gets the udatta and therefore the other vowel becomes anudatta. So it is marked as this vowel which comes before this udatta is marked as anudatta by the horizontal bar beneath it. That means now the, che, the word chetru stands for one who does the action of collecting that is a collector that is a karta of the action of collecting, a collector. Similarly now if we add the suffix trun to it, chi plus trun, in this chi, chi is accented, trun tru is accented but with, with a marker n coming at the end and this is a termed as a marker by 133 three, deleted by 139. So we have chi plus tru and chi becomes che, che plus tru. The finally derived form is che tru. If you remove the accent marks and look at the form, it is the same. But what is the difference? The difference is noted by accents. In this case, because of the marker na, unityadir nityam comes into play and marks the initial vowel accented namely the udatta. So this a becomes udatta. So now if you look at these two words, their form is same, chetru in both the cases, but the accent is different. In this case, it is the initial vowel that is accented. In this case, it is the final vowel that is accented. What this initial accented vowel means is one who does the action of collecting, not just in any manner, but very skillfully. A skillful collector, that is what is the meaning of chetru. This meaning difference is brought about by the accent na, the accent udatta on this initial vowel brought about by the marker na. And here it is the marker ch which brings about the final vowel accented which means something else. This is how the accent brings about the accent that brings about the meaning change is triggered by the it sounds. Let us also look at how an it sound brings about the negation of a compound. So use of it sound is made in the Paninian grammar to trigger the negation of the compound of an otherwise similar form. For example, 2 to 11 brings about this negation. So the sutra is Purana Guna Sohitartha Sat Avyaya Tavya Samanadhikaranena and we focus on Tavya. We have already seen the example in which a verbal form is derived with the help of the suffix Tavya. So the words mentioned in this sutra and we need to focus only on Tavya right now should not be compounded with a word with sixth case that is the meaning of the sutra. So this sutra does not negate the same compound with the word tavyat which is marked as the that is very crucial very important. It negates the compound only with tavya and not with tavyat. Let us see what happens then. So if you have the compound if you have the word derived with the verbal root chi by the addition of the suffix tavya you will get this accent chi plus tavya. So in this case the initial vowel is accented namely t. So now you have the word che tavya which has the middle vowel namely the vowel of tavya accented che tavya. This a which precedes the udatta therefore it is marked as anadatta shown by the horizontal bar beneath and this a which comes after this t is also marked as anudatta but, with, but it comes after the udatta therefore it is marked as varita shown by the vertical bar on top of the letter. This is the accent of the word chetavya, the act of collection. Remember 
it is derived with the help of the suffix tavya. What happens if the same word is derived with the suffix tavyat? So the derivation is similar, only the accent changes because this ta is marked as it by 133 and 139 deletes it, we get the form tavya with this final a marked as swarita by tit swaritam, the rule. So now in this case, this final a will be marked, will be retained as swarita and the rest will be anudatta, also shown as anudatta with the horizontal bar beneath the letters. This is how the accent will be derived and this is the difference. In this case, the final letter is swarita, in this case, the middle letter is udatta. Now, if we look at the compound situation also stated by 2 to 11, so if we want to derive, if we want to express this meaning, act of collection of chaitra, we will have to derive a compound. So suppose we have this form namely chaitrasya chetavyam in which the middle vowel is accented or udat, then the compound is negated by 2 to 11. But if we have the same meaning act of collection of chaitra, but with a different derivation namely the word chetavya derived with the suffix tavyat and therefore having this ya as udat in chetavya. So here you can have a compound now chaitra chetavya and so now you will get all the vowels as anudatta except this a uh, final a uh, which is marked as svarita. So the accent would be this. So the fact that this is accented shows to you that this chetavya must be derived from the root chi with the addition of the suffix tavyat and not tavya marked with the marker ta over here. Otherwise this compound is not possible. So this form this accent is not possible, this accent is possible and the feature is primarily different accent. So this is how the accent brings about the change in the grammatical operation as far as the negation of compound is concerned. Now to summarize, it is a very effective device used in the Paninian grammar to trigger various types of grammatical operations. And we have seen only a few, many more remain. And different kinds of linguistic usage gets systematically accounted for by the use of effective use of the it sounds or the markers. So we can say that it is a very, very fundamental part of the meta language of the Paninian grammar. So we can say in conclusion that it goes away, but it comes back and stays till the end. Thank you.